Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity. This is the place where we know and we practice the spiritual truth that God is good all the time, that God is love, that God is an infinite presence. <clears throat> Excuse me. That God is an in infinite presence that animates all things. We know, we practice knowing more and more deeply all the time this spiritual truth. So welcome into that vibration of exploration, of deepening, of opening, of being present to all that the universe has for us. This month in particular here at Unity, we are exploring the nature of community and connection. What does it mean to be in spiritual community? What does it mean to truly be deeply connected with one another. We're actually looking at, you know, coming into a deeper and a kinder and a more honest understanding of ourselves so that we can show up more authentically and more honestly with others and uh, allowing that part of us that is pure spirit, pure divinity to simply flow. It's also our stewardship month. You're going to learn a little bit more about that later. But our theme for stewardship this month is love. Uh, for stewardship this year for 2021 is love, grow, serve. How do we love more deeply, grow more fully, and serve one another from the very heart of God? So that's what's happening around here this month. I am Reverend Marla Mason, and we have a team that makes this happen for you week after week and that holds it down at our building. And I want to introduce you to a few of those people. First, I want to have a big shout out and a thank you to Monica McDowell. She, she's our administrator. She is like keeping things hopping at our actual physical building. Thank you, Monica. She also serves as our producer on Sunday mornings. She's clicking and watching and supporting you uh, virtually in the most powerful ways. So thank you, Monica. This morning we have as our board host, Clayton Brainerd. Thank you so much. <clears throat> You'll be hearing a little bit more from Clayton later. Susan Nidig gave us our meditation service this morning. Terrific, wasn't it? So grateful for you, Susan. Thank you very much. Typically then Susan and one of our prayer chaplains would lead the prayer circle after service, but we're not having a prayer circle after service today. We're having a stewardship launch party. So you wanna stick around for that. We can call it a prayer. We'll call it a prayer for our center. So uh, thank you, Susan, for giving us a powerful meditation and, uh, and for holding us in consciousness always. I'm really grateful for you. Our musical guest this morning under, hmm, actually, I must say it differently. Our musical guest this morning is Olivia Brownlee. And um, I'm so grateful to welcome Olivia again into our community. I am touched by the the love and the authenticity and the presence she brings. She's a powerful and amazing musician and she is a busy pup out in the world. Go check out her website, oliviabrownlee.com. You'll learn more about what she's up to. And uh, right now she has a song to help us center in the truth of who we are and what we are doing here. Olivia. Thanks, Marla.
when you're on the street when evening falls so hard i will comfort you i'll do my part oh and times get hard Troubled water, I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay me Sail on, silver girl, sail on by, your time has come to shine, all your dreams are on their way, see how they shine. And so breathing together, not fooled by the appearance of being separated by space, we unite in a consciousness of oneness, a consciousness of love, an awareness that the infinite mind and heart of the spirit of all life is animating us right now. And we simply open our hearts, we open our minds. We become willing to know, to, to, to move in this truth, recognizing our oneness with all time, all space, all things, all people. And so it's in this consciousness, in this awareness, that I declare a blessing on this time together today. I know that we are lifted and inspired by the music, by the message, by the sacred community we share as we build a bridge, as we build a bridge of love from here to there, from where we are to where we are called to be. We simply say yes to all that is provided to support us in this journey. And so I give thanks for it all. I surrender it and I let it be. And so it is, amen. I'm gonna take this opportunity to read through our affirmation once. As you hear these words, I just invite you to, um, you know, take a receptive pose, open, willing, allowing these words to sink deeply into your consciousness and into your soul. And the affirmation goes like this. At the center of my being lies the life-giving presence of the infinite, 
I effortlessly connect with this presence as I joyfully embrace the essence of God in everyone and everything. And so it is. And now having heard and opened to these words, I invite you to speak them with me with conviction. Together, please. At the center of my being lies the life-giving presence of the infinite. I effortlessly connect with this presence as I joyfully embrace the essence of God in everyone and everything. And so it is. <clears throat> Samad and Archie were both in the room. And each man was whistling a different tune. The closer they got, the less they could hear. So they both whistled louder and covered their ears. The neighbors were lawn mowing innocently when along came this unnerving cacophony. No one could hear a discernible song, just terrible noises that didn't belong. They called the police as the nuisance was grave, for each man was hell-bent on the other to save. But the cops, hearing whistles like siren horns blare, they left thinking coppers were already there. It never got better, just louder, more shrill, since neither would bend to the other man's will. It went from a cry to a roar to a shriek when Arch noticed Sam demonstrate a technique. Samad brought air to his mouth from his nose. That's clever, thought Arch. Let me try that. Here goes. It doesn't mean I'm going to change up my song. It just helps me out and it's smart, man. Well done. Likewise, said Samad, I've noticed a thing that you do when you whistle and not when you sing. You can whistle as well breathing in as without. I'm not changing either, but it helps me, no doubt. And so it continued till little by more their ears came uncovered. They sat on the floor, and while neither much changed either song he once blew, they whistled in tune and made up something new. Oh, thank you, Olivia. Perfect. Perfect. Today's message is called Love Builds the Bridge. And I'm going to start with a quote from Zoroaster. Who knows who Zoroaster was? Yeah, right? He actually founded this thing called Zoroastrianism, named after him. And he lived in uh, the 600s BC, before Common Era, before Common Era, in the 600s about. And he was a, a poet and a teacher and um, a, 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 a part, he, he founded the Parsi religion, Zoroastrianism. And uh, he said something very wise, and it goes like this. Taking the first step with a good thought, the second with a good word, and the third, with a good deed, I enter paradise. Taking the first step with a good thought, the second with a good word, and the third with a good deed, I enter paradise. Three prerequis prerequisites for paradise, thought, word, and deed. When we take the step with a good thought, with a good word, and with a good deed, we step out onto, you know, I was thinking when I was reading this this morning, I was thinking of the, um, oh, the movie where the guy, you know, the movie where the guy, and he steps off the cliff and the bridge, he can't see the bridge. But as he steps, 
the bridge forms under his feet. It's the famous movie, Harrison Ford movie, right? And when he steps off, uh, it's one of the arc movies, you know? When he steps off the edge, like the bridge forms because of his confidence that something is there. When we step off with good word, uh, good thought, good word and good deed, we can step out onto that bridge of love that we cannot see and be confident that we will be supported. Now, our book of the month this month is uh, uh, More Together Than Alone. It's a powerful read. Um, he has a little chapter in here that is actually a little bit disturbing to me. Um, it is starting on page 51, if you have a copy of the book. He talks about the two tribes. And what he says is that we basically, humanity has two tribes and there appears to be a wall between the two tribes. And the first tribe is the go away tribe. And the go away tribe is, is the tribe that believes that humans by nature are, are we're self-serving, we are untrustworthy, we need to be controlled, we need lots of boundaries and rules, we need lots of moral constraints and legal constraints. This is the go away tribe. And the come here tribe, he calls it the come teach me tribe. I, I kind of heard it as more the come here tribe. The come here tribe believes that humans by nature are kind and trustworthy and, and that we need to cultivate ways for people to express more freely and, and allow relationships to drive behavior. And so we have the, uh, according to Mark Nepo, the uh, uh, go away tribe and the come here tribe and it would appear that there is a wall between us that cannot come down. And as I was reading this and I was thinking about it, and, and he, he even implies, although he doesn't say it right out, that it's actually kind of a continuum, that we have the come here tribe and the go away tribe, and that there is this continuum from one end to the other. And some folks are like seriously way at the go away end, and some people are seriously way at the come here end. And that, that we kind of, you know, if you thought about it, you might be able to place yourself somewhere on that continuum. Do I believe that humans by nature are self-serving and not trustworthy? Or do I believe that, 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 you know, we are, we're kind, we're trustworthy. What do I believe? Where would I put myself on that continuum? And so I invite you to give that some thought. And the other thing he says when he's talking about this is he says, you know, culturally, collectively here in the West, we've swung from one end to the other over time. We've had eras in our Western history where we've been much more inclusive, where we've been much more of the come here, uh, allowed that to be the tribe that is in dominant expression. And we uh, have had other times where we're much more in the go away expression. And he says, and I agree with him, that we seem to be moving, uh, uh, it, swinging toward the go away end of things, where, where we are, we seem to be uh, becoming more suspicious of one another, less trusting of one another and, 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 and one's good motives. And for me, that really resonated. And as a, I mean, I think that kind of my natural tribe, and, and let me just say one thing, neither tribe is wrong. Do you understand that? Neither tribe is wrong. The reason neither tribe is wrong is not because truth is relative, but because we all have our being in the one body of God. We are all expressions of the one life. And so there is something for us in both tribes. There is a truth of wholeness. There is a oneness, a unity. And the furthest this way of the come here tribe and the furthest that way of the go away tribe are one in consciousness, in mind, in, 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 in the divine mind of the infinite because there is only one thing happening. And so our opportunity is to find the place where we can develop our trust and our courage to include everyone. What? 
even the ones who aren't in our tribe. What if we included everyone from, a, from an awareness that there is one heart of God beating? And what we tend to do, I think, is build walls. We tend to, to you're over there and I'm over here and let's just build a wall because you get on your side and I get on my side. And then we're not peaceful. And Mother Teresa told us if we don't have peace, it's because we've forgotten we belong to each other. If we're not feeling peaceful in, in our relationships with not just those who are close to us, but also those other folks out in the world that we have a lot of thoughts about. If we're not feeling peaceful, it's because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. Both tribes belong to the mind and the body of God. And our opportunity is to remember that and to allow that to teach us whatever is ours to learn. Take the first step with good thought. One life, one power, one presence. The thought of love, the thought of inclusion, the thought of belonging. We take the first step with good thought. The second step with good word. See, our words follow our thinking, right? If words of meanness are coming out of your mouth, it's because you're thinking thoughts of meanness. If words of not love are coming out of our mouths, it means we're thinking not love thoughts. So we take the first step with good thought, the second step with good word. We, we operationalize those good thoughts through our speaking in the world. And our third step with a good deed. We actually do good and we enter paradise. And dare I say paradise is that consciousness of oneness where we're including all the tribes and everybody along the continuum rather than building walls and defining and it, like, like we're, we're allowing those to crumble into the consciousness of our oneness with the infinite. How do we step out? How do we bring down those walls? How do we open our hearts more fully than we ever have before to stepping forth with a good thought, a good word and a good deed. Well, it just so happens that our love, grow, serve theme fits this notion so beautifully well. Last week, we introduced to you the notion of our, um, our theme for our 2020 stewardship. What does it mean to be a caretaker, to be a steward of our center? And, and I, I dare say it means the same thing to be a steward or a caretaker of our center is the same thing as being a steward or a caretaker of our culture, our family, our country, our world. It's all the same stuff. We're just making the skills bigger and bigger. We're just generalizing the skills from my individual life to my family, from my family to my community, my community to my city, my city to my country, my world. It's all the same skills. And the first skill is to just plain be a loving person. And you might remember from last week, I talked about uh, I, I, to anchor ourselves in this idea of love. I used a quote from uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith. He said, you're not meant to wait for it. He's talking about love here. You're not meant to wait for it. You're not meant to search for it. You are meant to generate it. We are meant to be generators of love. We are meant to be generators of inclusion because inclusion is what love looks like. The practical application of love is acceptance and inclusion. Yes. And so we, we, we love as God has loved us unconditionally, fully and completely. No matter which of these two tribes you might be in or where along the continuum you might find yourself the universe is in love with you. I believe that. The universal presence is in love with you. And our opportunity is to love in the same way that the universal presence loves. To see others as God sees others. To see ourselves as God sees ourselves. 
and in, and and this kind of unconditionality allows us to transcend the idea of trying you know i mean i think it's important to talk about this idea of tribes and continuums and where do you sit and to kind of figure out where you are it's useful but only for the for the purpose of growing your consciousness it's not so you can camp out there it's not so you can continue to be small. It's so that you can kind of figure out, well, here's who I am today and what do I want to grow into? And I begin to get a bigger vision. And I love myself enough to make the effort to bring down the walls and practice loving others. I love myself enough to see if I can't love others the way God does, to see if I can't begin to see others through the eyes of the infinite. It's easy to love the people we already love, isn't it? <laughs> it's easy to love the people who agree with us, who are on our end of the tribal continuum. If you're a come here, it's easy to love other come here's. If you're a go away, it's easy to love other go aways, right? Can the go aways love the come here's and the come here's love the go aways? That's the practice. And with that good thought of love, if we take the first step with that good thought of love, and remember that we're all members of the whole. We enter paradise. And we do that by being present to one another in a consciousness of love by cooperating with one another. You know, one of the, Mark Nepo uh, quotes Margaret Mead in this book saying, um, having two bathrooms ruined our ability to cooperate. And I laughed at that so hard because I, you know, how many of you have ever watched like House Hunters or something like that on HGTV and they always want four bathrooms and nine bedrooms. And I just think, wow, you know what? There were seven of us, you know, in a three bedroom house with one bathroom, you know, somehow we made do, right? And, and so when I read that, having two bathrooms ruined our ability to cooperate. <laughs> now, I don't know that that's really true, but it is a really interesting way to think about, can we, can we cooperate with one another? Can we, can we work with one another? Can we surrender? Some of our false beliefs about one another and about lack and about not enoughness, enough to really walk in love with one another, even the folks from the other tribe. Now, two weeks ago, uh, Reverend Masando was here and he talked about just like me. He talked about, you know, this idea that that we can embrace, like one of the ways to practice being the presence of love for others is to is to engage in a, in a spiritual practice of recognizing that, honestly, nobody is really that different from me. And so the exercise is called Just Like Me. And so um, it looks something like when we see someone. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, just every time you see someone to just, you know, I mean, look around this screen, find somebody. Just look on the screen. You find one of these people, look at them and just ask yourself, how is this person just like me? Oh, I'm looking at you. How is this person just like me? Well, they have a physical body a lot like mine. They're probably seeking happiness and satisfaction and contentment just like I am. They're probably wanting to feel peaceful just like I am. They probably have people in their life that they love just like I am. And I'm willing to bet that some of these people that we're all looking at on the screen here are in a different tribe. But there is an underlying unity, an underlying sameness, an underlying oneness. And when we can use the power of love to link to that, rather than the surface, everybody looks so different. To anchor in the loving attitude, the loving stance, this person is just like me. In more ways than we are different. This person is just like me. And so we said we were going to take the first step. 
<laughs> with a good thought. And I invite you to take the first step with a thought of love. And then we said we were going to take the second step with good word. And um, uh, thinking about our stewardship theme this year, uh, uh, the second word in our stewardship theme is grow. And I realized, you know, if I am practicing love all by itself, that is going to grow me. Right? And when we talk about growing in the spiritual sense, we are talking about allowing that spark of the divine at the center of us to hold sway in our lives. All it wants to do is know itself more deeply. All God wants to do is express. And the growing piece of the spiritual journey, I mean, that's what the spiritual journey is all about. But it's not about getting more. It's not about knowing more. It's not about learning more. It's about allowing that imprisoned splendor, if you will, to, to shine forth. You see, the spiritual growth comes when we're willing to, to examine our lives, to open our hearts, to set aside the ego stuff, to set aside our little needs and concerns and allow the divinity within to shine forth. And then we, we find the courage out of that, that place to live more authentically, to live more fully. And Eric Butterworth, and this is our quote uh, for the grow piece of our stewardship theme, Eric Butterworth says, don't go through life, grow through life. Have you ever known somebody who didn't grow a bit, even a little bit? Have you ever been that person? I mean, I have had stagnant years, let me tell you. <laughs> but you know what happens when we're in the middle of those stagnant times is, is, is our, we, our, that we become so uneasy because it is in the nature of life. It is in the nature of the infinite to evolve. That's its nature. And when we are not evolving, we get super dissatisfied and unhappy and uneasy, right? And we get so super unhappy and so dissatisfied and so uneasy that finally we burst out of the shell because I can't stand it anymore. And that's what the dark night of the soul is, right? Darkest before the dawn. When we just, I cannot even stand my old story anymore. I'm willing to change now. And it's that discomfort that pushes us up against the edge. And finally, we just like, it's so bad, I gotta let it go and be willing to grow, to learn something different. So we love and we grow. Our second step with good word, we grow through the power of our word, through the power of our prayers, through the power of our willingness to surrender the old and step forth into the new. And the third step, good deed out of this loving presence and learning to live from that place and growing from that place, we serve. We serve others in the world. We become willing to be a source of the nature of, of the infinite through service. And our quote for our theme of service this year is the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. Gandhi said that. The best way to find yourself, start serving, lose yourself in service to others. You see, when we give of our spiritual gifts, when we give from, the play, from that that we have been given, we are, again, duplicating that nature of God. All God does is give and bless and generate. And we become givers who are blessing and generating. We become the source of so much good. And so we step forward in service to others. Remember, the third step, I step forward. The third step with good deed. I do good in the world. I make a difference. I volunteer at the polls. I clean up, you know, our neighbor, I don't know if I told you guys this, this summer, you know, when I was sick and Patty had to be away from the house and our neighbor came over and mowed our lawn. Like just, I just looked out the window one day and he was out there mowing our lawn, didn't ask, didn't anything. He just mowed our lawn. And then 
Two weeks later, he was back and he did it again. Oh, wait, he did it like four or five times over the course of the summer. He just showed up and mowed our lawn. That lawn was not going to get mowed by me. He took care of us. He stepped forth with a good deed and he made a great and mighty difference in the world. He made such a difference in my life. And you know, it's not that big of a thing, but it's a big thing. The small things become big things when they are done with a heart of service. And let's not forget. Hmm. When we step forward, first step, good thought, second step, good deed, uh, uh, good word, third step, good deed. What happens? What's the end of the quote? I enter paradise. I enter paradise. See, the work of love, the work of love is to help one another cross that threshold into paradise. The work of love is to build the bridge that supports others in the good thought, the, the good thought, the good word, the good deed in, in moving into the place where they too can enter paradise. Now, I, 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 one of the things Nepo says in here, he says, our job is not to engage the cynicism are of our age. There's, we're pretty cynical right now, aren't we? He says, our job is not to engage the cynicism of our age, nor to condemn it, but to experience it, to be at one with it. He, and, and I loved this. He, and he was quoting somebody else here, and I forget right now who it was. He says, the opposite of innocence is not guilt. The opposite of innocence is not guilt. The opposite of innocence is experience. And what I love so much about that is, is we're moving through this human experience as best we can. And in our innocence, we may do not life-affirming things. In our Ununderstanding in our lack of understanding, we may behave in unlife affirming behaviors. We may become cynical, we may become mean, we may become angry. We, there are all kinds of things we might do. But that doesn't mean we're guilty of anything. It means we've had an experience and now we have an opportunity to learn from it to anchor it in the idea that I'm going to love myself enough to grow, th grow from and through this experience so that I may be of service to all of humanity, so that I may be of service to the greater consciousness in my own evolution. Now, last week we talked about the art of community. Nepo says that the art of community is to discover how we are the building blocks of community. We are the building blocks of community and, and we have a shared vision here at Unity. We have a shared vision of a world that is populated by those who are awakened, by those who are on the spiritual, on the, on the conscious spiritual path. We have a vision of a world transformed by our willingness to be in the presence of love growing and evolving and being of service to the greater whole. And we talked last week about, you know, that's a pretty tall order, that vision, a, love, a world that works for everybody, a world where peace is the norm, a world where we're no longer separating ourselves, building walls of this tribe and that tribe. That's a very tall order. Okay, it's a tall order. Let's be about it. Let's be about it. Because it's, it's, 
the vision has to be big enough and it has to be audacious enough to to call us forward into it so it's not really that the key the key is to understand it's not whether we achieve the vision it's how we are on the way to the vision how do we love grow and serve on the way toward creating a world that works for everyone and i'll tell you what if we stay focused on the how we have a much better chance of creating the what so your art of community what oh, how are you the building block a building block of our community how are you called to love grow and serve here at unity taking the first step with good thought, the second step with good word, the third step with good deed. We enter paradise together. And paradise isn't a place, you guys. It's a way of being that is generative, that is life affirming, that is anchored in abundance, and that is anchored in love. So let's turn within and practice a little bit. Being present to this idea of love, being present to this idea of complete and total inclusion being present to the notion that we can bring down the walls of separation and division and duality and anchor in oneness. And so I invite you to close your eyes. To take the sacred breath with me. And as you breathe, simply follow your breath into your heart. And begin to feel your heart fill. With an awareness of something greater than you are. Allow your heart to bubble over. With an awareness of your unity and oneness with the all. And with each and every breath, you allow your heart to expand, to open. And you recognize that you are a living vehicle for the almighty, for the infinite. And you recognize that this infinite life wants only to express as you. And you are so intimately aware of this presence. It's beating your heart. It's breathing you now. It's rushing your blood about your veins and arteries. Every cell in your body is vibrating with the awareness and the aliveness of spirit. And you recognize this life-giving essence as love. And so in this consciousness of love, Allow yourself now to embody a sense of love for yourself exactly as you are in your innocence, in your experience of life.
embody a sense of deep self-love. Taking the first step with good thought. And recognize now that you love yourself because you are love, at one with the infinite love. God is love. I am love. And you just repeat silently in your mind, God is love. I am love love over and over a mantra of truth reciting repeating anchoring in god is love i am love and the second step with good word And in this awareness, you begin to imagine yourself out in the world. In your daily interactions with family, with friends, with people online, in social media, in your work, however it is you spend your time, you begin to see yourself fully engaged in being a generative, loving presence, an inclusive presence. Even for those from the other tribe, you remind yourself, God is love. I am love. And you become a safe space in which others can begin to express that divine stirring within them that only wants to love, grow, and serve. And in this way, you enter the daily paradise of life, being all that God would have you be. Giving thanks. Awake, alert, aware. Creating that world that works for everyone. And as you bring your attention again to your breath, I do give thanks for the message, for the power we embody to build the bridges that change the world. God is good and all is well, and I close this message with a grateful heart, and so it is. Amen. Some walls are made of stone, sometimes we build our own. Some walls stand for years, some wash away with tears. Some walls, some walls are lined with gold, where some hearts stay safe and cold. Some walls are made of doubt, holding in and keeping out. If there's any hope for love at all, some walls must fall. Some walls, 
Some walls are built on pride. Some keep the child inside. Some walls are made in fear that the love let go will disappear if there's any hope or love at all. Some walls must fall if there's any hope or love at all. Some walls must fall. Thank you so much for that fabulous piece. So may I uh, invite you to take the third step with me today into paradise. And one of the most powerful ways I am able to pursue this lofty goal is with the support that I provide you need a Bellevue. And that support is more about me and my commitment uh, to the path. Because I spent the majority of my life not in paradise and I didn't enjoy that so much. And so when I came to Unity of Bellevue and heard Reverend Marla speak for the first time, that door was opened in an instant. And uh, when it came time for me to, and Tony and I to come to the point in, in time to support Unity of Bellevue in all ways, there was no hesitation. And uh, I have benefited more than I can put into words. So I encourage you to join me in this practice and uh, Join me in our affirmation at this point together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. And so I give thanks for the gift. I give thanks for the giver. And I consecrate these gifts to the good use of Unity of Bellevue. I know that we are divinely supported, that something wonderful is happening as we open our hearts toward our goal of a world that works for everyone. As we open our hearts to be all that God would have us be, we are lovingly and generously supported. And I am so very grateful. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica McDowell Elvig. I am your center administrator. If you are visiting with us virtually for the first time, we invite you into our tribe, our tribe that celebrates oneness, that celebrates loving and growing and serving. Your soul is welcome here. Uh, we are completely online right now. And the best way to stay up to date on everything that is happening in our community is to go to our website, unityofbellevue.org, and to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. At the bottom of every page of that website is a sign-up form. And um, when you do that, you will receive an email back from me inviting you to receive a welcome packet. I'd love to send you some free gifts. So uh, look for the signing up for that newsletter on our website, and then look for the email from me inviting you to uh, receive a welcome packet from us. Uh, some of the things that we do have going online. Well, today we have an online party, our Love Grow Serve. 
stewardship launch party is today. Following service, we'll have a couple of minutes of break time uh, when our celebration service wraps up. And then um, we invite you to this party. Everyone is welcome. Some of you have a, a party box. Some of you don't, it doesn't matter. You are welcome where we have extras. We can send you a party box after the fact if you decide you want one. Um, and we just would love to see all of you um, for that party today. The other thing we have going on this week online is we have our Wednesday Community Connect. Every Wednesday at 1 p.m., Reverend Marla leads us in an informal check-in with each other so that we can stay focused on spiritual principles and practices during this time where we are completely online and, and um, as a way of staying connected uh, with each other. Uh, we have an online workshop coming up on Tuesday, October 27th, 6.30. I'm leading that align with your divine purpose. That is an opportunity for me to teach you some tips and tools for aligning uh, your energy consciousness. And I love to teach this and I'd love to have you there. You can register through the links on our newsletter or through our website under events and classes and workshops. Uh, our prayer chaplains uh, love to pray for you. They are awesome. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, we will not have the prayer circle following service today that will return next Sunday following celebration service. But if you have any prayer requests, you can go to our website on our prayer page and fill out the prayer request form. Or you can email them directly at prayerchaplains at unityofbelvie.org and they will pray with you and for you. And if you would like them to call you to pray with you over the phone or just simply to talk with you, uh, please put that in your message and one of them will be happy to reach out to you. Uh, our book of the month is uh, the book that Reverend Marla has been talking about, Mark Nepo, More Together Than Alone. If you would like to purchase that through our bookstore, you can go to our website um, and fill out the book of the month um, order form, and I am happy to send that to you. It's a way of supporting our center and our bookstore and staying um, in the same consciousness as we read together as a center. Also, Unity Kids is online every Sunday at 10 a.m. It posts on our Unity Kids Facebook page. So go and check that out. Sabrina, our youth director, posts that every Sunday. And it's awesome. And we invite you to do that. Uh, I believe that is everything. Reverend Marla. Okay, as we prepare to close here today, I just want to remind you that we are gathering uh, a few minutes after we are finished here for our annual stewardship lunch. And um, that's an opportunity for you to get some uh, information. What does stewardship mean? Get, get a little bit of history, take a look at where we are going in the future and, um, and just really begin to catch the joy that your board of trustees and other leadership has for the direction we are headed as the spiritual center. And so we will start that in a moment. We're going to say our prayer for protection. Then we're gonna take a three minute break. So take a three minute break. Uh, head on back and uh, join us. So please join me as I uh, share our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in three minutes. Bye, everybody.
shine.